you move back to LA, you're 19 years old. Yes. And you decide to go into porn. I do, oh my goodness. And it's crazy because I honestly had ran away from the whole California fast life and was thinking, okay, I'm gonna start in Nebraska. And my cousin, um, we ended up like dancing out there and doing a little bit of, you know, um, exotic dancing. <laughs> in particular, yeah, stripping. Okay. So and you we, were how old when you started stripping? Nineteen. Okay. 19. Um, so, well, if you want to say started, I don't really want to say when I started, but <laughs> so you started before <laughs> you were underage. But I knew, I knew a little bit more than my cousin did. Okay, so, so hold on a sec. So you were you were basically dancing underage. I, at one point in time, yeah. How young? I think I was sixteen, seventeen. 16, and I went, I went to a club in Pomona all by myself. Just was like, I'm just gonna go make this money. And so you showed up, they didn't check IDs? No. Or maybe they did, I had a fake one. You had a fake ID? I had a fake one. I had you a got... fake name, I had everything. I had, I, had a, hmm, I had a pip who taught me the game very, very well. And he taught me how to be, how to have a, another identity. If you're so young and you're adolescent, you're, 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 you're a teenager and you've never been in the system and nobody's been fingerprinted you, oh, I'm giving out some game right now. <laughs> okay. Um, if nobody has ever fingerprinted you and you're young, if you are out there doing things that you have no business, then you can go to jail under this name that you've, that you've made up. You can go to jail under that name, fingerprints are under that name, just don't ever get caught under your name. Okay. Don't ever have your ID on you. <laughs> and you can have actually two identities. It's interesting. So you're 16, you lose your virginity. Where does the pimp and the strip club kind of fit <laughs> into this, to this equation here? You just want to get all the juicy stuff. Um, so um, I ended up moving from the hood to... Uh, Fontana, like Rancho, Rancho Cucamonga area. Because okay. my mama was sick of the area and the guys following me from the strip clubs. It was crazy. It was just a bad area, bad neighborhood. And we lived like right down the street from Charlie's, like the strip club. It was crazy. Because um, we had moved to Ninth Ave in Florence at one point mm -hmm. when I was in, uh, going to Crenshaw. So she ended up moving us to Fontana and I met a pimp there. <laughs> Isn't that funny? My mama moved me out the hood to get me away from everything. And I met this rich, fly motherfucker. He was so fly. Boy, he had so much money. That nigga was fly than a motherfucker. What was his pimp name? Famous. 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 He was famous, baby. He was famous. Pimp and too. famous. Pimp and famous. Okay. So um, I actually met him. Um, make sure there's no lipstick on my teeth. Um, I met him walking down the street from school or something. And I think I thought I was a hot ass anyway. I would have heels on, you know, like, what are you 16 with heels on? Walking down the street. So um, he saw me walking and he met me and he was very flashy. He was like, oh yeah, I'm just going to the bank real quick. You know, <laughs> had all these hundreds, like looked like it was like 10 to $20,000. It was a lot of money he had. He was gonna okay. put it in the bank. I'm like, damn, okay. He was, and then he was like, oh, I would love to take you out on a date. You know, he's smooth talking me. So took me out on a date. The next day, pulled up in the bins, talking the cars, talking to you and shit, telling me to get in the car, open the door, crazy shit. He had satellite radio all up. He was just real flashy, so he okay. knew how to get you. Uh, how old <laughs> was famous at the time? He lied. Um, I don't know how old he was. He said he was 32. I think it was like 46 though, 40 something. So this is a, a 46 year old. Maybe, he was something. Taking a 16 year old out mm -hmm. on a date. He was 22 years older than me. I remember that. Okay, 16 plus 22 is 38. 38, there we go, he was okay, 38. So he was a 38 year old mm -hmm. taking a 16 year old out on a date. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Uh, he was smart, he didn't, he didn't really wanna get himself into any trouble as far as because I was so young and he didn't he wasn't used to dealing with young girls and he told me that so he was going to wait until I turned of age. Okay. So he just kind of wined and dined me, took me to certain little places, showed me um, the game, introduced me to some of his bottom bitches or his okay. his bottom bitch and different girls, went to Hawaii, did a little something. It's just and then Would right you, before my 18th birthday, I was out there. How big was was his stable of girls? 
he had an interest in stable. He was, um, none of the girls ever got to really interact with each other. It wasn't like, oh, you know, I got a stable of five bitches in the house. No. He didn't operate like that. Um, each of his bitches had their own house in their name. Okay. They own shit. And every once in a while, he put a one bitch on automatic. And that bitch would stay on automatic while he go fuck with his other bitch. And she got time. And then that bitch is on automatic and go fuck with his other bitch. Just n every once in a while, if he needed an older girl to talk to a younger girl, you know, to give her some game, then he'll do that. But I don't know. I, I would never know. I don't know how many girls he had. So he kept them all separate. Everybody was separate. I only okay. got to meet one. You only got to meet one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you turned 18 mm -hmm. and you were ready to ready. work. Yeah, I was ready. So how did he put you to work? I was, I was walking. You're Back the, then. Oh, you yeah. were actually on yeah, And we was cute. I don't know about these girls out now. <laughs> but we was cute. Yes, what, I was walking. What street, I was walking. What street, what city? I was in Orange County somewhere. Orange County. Yeah, I was Just walking. right there on the, yeah. on the track. Yeah, I was A lot walking. of other girls out there too? Oh, yeah, very young girls. Okay. A lot of young girls. So what was A it like to be 18 years old and suddenly you were on the track waiting for dudes to pull up? Scary. Different. You know? But I was prepped for so many years, and my mind has been conditioned to just get this money. So that's all I cared about was making a certain amount of money. So that's and making someone happy because and you, and you don't realize it, but these men they get in your minds and they make you feel like the only thing that you want to do is make that person happy. You know what I'm saying? So all you want to do is make sure that you get your money and make that man happy. Make famous happy. Hello. Okay. Mm -hmm. Always a very interesting kind of relationship hmm. between the pimp and the hoe. It is. It's always, it's always a little bit different, but it's, I think a lot of people don't realize that it's a relationship. It is. It's like oh, a, they'll, die, they'll die for you. They'll kill for you. They'll yeah. steal for you. they do anything for you. Trust and believe that. But you got to bring them that money. Yeah. Well, you are they money, so why wouldn't they do everything for you? Right. Why wouldn't they? Violence usually has a place in a lot of these types of relationships? Uh, sometimes. Depends. Sometimes. H have you had, I've only, was he ever violent with you? I only got hit once. You only so, got hit once? Yeah, only once. And it was a good one. <laughs> I learned my lesson that once. How, uh, well number one, why did you get hit? Talking too much shit. Just I got a big mouth and I can't shut the fuck up. And I would just keep going and okay. going and going. And then he punched you? Uh, I don't remember. It was a lot of rumbling and all that, but I remember me sliding down the stairs and my tooth going through my lip. I remember that. I so remember my lip hitting that motherfucking ground. <laughs> or my tooth. Your tooth went through your lip. Oh yeah, it was insane. So you broke your tooth? I didn't break it, but it went through my lip. Oh, oh I see you kind of bit down mm -hmm. on it. It went through it, completely through my lip. Most people would say that you should leave a relationship yeah. like that, but you stayed? Uh, for a little bit, yeah, I guess. After a while, like I said, um, I eventually got tired of that life and I okay. wanted to do something else. And that's why I went back to Nebraska. Uh, and I much, ran away. <laughs> that was my way of running away. When you were on the track, what would be a good day? How much money? Fifteen. Fifteen hundred? Mm -hmm. That'd you be would, a great day. That'd be a great day. A regular day is a thousand. A regular day is a, a thousand. A whack ass day is five, six hundred. Okay. How many guys were you seeing in a, in a great day? Wow. Gosh, you make me remember so many things. Baby, this was so many years ago. This was another life. <laughs> God damn, let me think. Mm. On a good day? You got to see at least 10 to 15, 10 to 15 guys. 10 to 15 guys. Yeah. I don't know why I had to count that. Okay. <laughs> How much money do you think you put in? Oh, well, number one, first question is, does all the money go to famous? Mm, I was a smart girl, so no. You stashed a few dollars. I stashed it. But it was all supposed to go to famous. It was supposed to, yes. But my mama told me better. My mama told me to give her the money, and I did. So your mom knew that you were on yeah. the track? My mama, I don't know if she knew all that in particular. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we ain't gonna say all that. But she knew that I was dealing with a pimp. She knew she that I had that fast lifestyle and this is what I was going to do. And she felt like if I was going to do it, that why the fuck 
are you giving all that man your money? Put something away so when you do leave this man, you have something. You have a cushion. You have something. Okay. And she was smart and she was right. How much money do you think you gave famous during the time you knew? I don't know, two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand dollars. Probably, close to it. Tax free. Tax free. What made you ultimately leave? Hmm. I don't know. I just honestly, at that time, because I got a fucked up memory, baby. I don't remember. I don't think it was like, oh my god, it's such a horrible situation because a lot of people like to play it like that, and I'm not that. It, did, it wasn't horrible for me. It was a great experience, and the experience makes me who I am. I mean, did you ever have a bad situation with, with a John, like trying to beat you up, kill you? I have. I've had a situation. Yeah, he tied me up in, in a car one time. And, he tied um, you up in a car, in the yeah. trunk? Uh, no, in the back seat. In the back tied seat. Me, yep, and tried to like tie me up with my own belt. But I'm so little and I'm very athletic. I got out, took his wallet and everything, yeah. Okay. Butt ass naked. <laughs> okay. Held the car. He didn't um, get me. So. And Famous was right down the street waiting on me. Okay. Did Famous <laughs> ever have to come in and handle some business? Uh, he just makes sure that he's there. You know, he swoops in and picks me up. Okay. All the time. Always eyes on me. So, you decide to leave at some point. Mm hmm. After how many years? Cause you started at 18, you were? I was with, I was with them for a minute. So I, it was only a year in really. So you were 19. I was 19 when I moved to Nebraska. Okay, so at 19 you said, I'm done with this life completely. Yeah. And you moved to Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Okay. I moved to Nebraska and I tried to do like the good girl stuff. You know, I went to school, mm -hmm. I, I hadn't finished school. So I went back to school, finished school, got my diploma, walked the stage, had my family come out and support me and do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up getting a really nice job at this telemarketing company or whatever. <laughs> okay. I was dating my supervisor, Tori, my supervisor, this white guy, my first white guy I ever dated actually. Okay. Um, and he was just too nice. When I asked him, to um, pursue my career out here and come back to California, he actually let me. He let me go and pursue porn and everything I wanted to do. It was kind of interesting. Okay, so you moved back to LA, mm -hmm. and why, why porn? Um, well, me and my cousin, we were dancing in Nebraska, and we were, we were like, I was kind of showing her a different lifestyle because I was kind of, this was my roommate actually in Nebraska, my cousin. Um, I was trying to, I was disappointed in the men that she chose and how they treated her and took her money. And I'm like, you about to get this nigga some money? Is she crazy? You going to your glove compartment to give this man some money. These raggedy niggas. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. So I kind of introduced her to a different lifestyle and told her, you know, well, you can make some money dancing. You have a beautiful face, beautiful body, you know? And we would go to different places like Miami in California. And, and I'm sorry, we would take girls from Miami in California mm -hmm. and go to like little hole in the walls because we knew about South Dakota hunting season and yeah. we knew about Atlantic City when they had like certain little things going on. So uh, in, in particular, she had a, a situation where she had to come out to California. Mm -hmm. So she came out here and she met this agent who thought she was just the most beautiful woman he ever seen and he just put her in a bunch of like fish and grits that's when fish and grits was big it was crazy mm -hmm. that magazine um she was doing a bunch of stuff with jada kiss and just a bunch of rappers and stuff and she was doing very well so she kind of told me about it which i didn't want to come back but since she had connections i was like well i might as well and um i came back and the whole video vixen thing didn't really work out for me because i'm not as voluptuous but the porn thing did. And I stayed. My cousin um, was Sapphire Flames. Sapphire Flames. Mm -hmm. She stayed for a little bit. She gone. But why would Dre put me in here? Okay. I mean, because if they started from where they started from, I was just a quiet girlfriend who got beat up and told to sit down and shut up. Me, personally, I do as well because, I mean, even to this day, none of his kids, none of his baby mamas, his mistresses, anybody, nobody has came up with HIV or nothing like that. So, I mean, just, just rationally thinking, something, something had to go on. 